I think these are very, um, you know, I think we can combine the answer for both of these into one because we need to remember one thing. Uh, what is the human microbiome and why is it so important and why are we hearing about it now? At the end of the day, when you look at the biblical account of Adam being raised up from the dirt or you look at other um, mythological stories about how humans had connections with the earth one way or another, we see that we as human individuals, and this has been proven by the human, human Microbiome Project, we see that we as human individuals live in symbiosis with our environment, predominantly the microorganisms in our environment. Meaning this, when you're looking at me right now, you're literally looking at one human cell per every 10 bacteria cell. I mean, you're looking at a bunch of bugs. Yet, in God's beautiful design, I have been created a human individual to live in symbiosis with all the viruses, the fungi, and the bacteria to create who I am. And a lot of the human biome, the microbiome, is centered in the gut. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Because when you look at the immune system, the immune system predominantly is housed in the gut. Where the neutrophils, the white blood cells, and the immune fighting, and the immune boosting, disease fighting properties are there. So what that means is we have a combination of probiotics and pathogenic biotics. I'm, I know you've heard of probiotics. Probiotics are known as good bacteria, but that's what it is, pro, good bacteria. Probiotics isn't a supplement. You know what I mean? Really, the definition of it is good bacteria. You find probiotics in your, your fermented foods. You find probiotics um, eating dirt. I mean, seriously, you can eat dirt. There's just healthy soil-based organisms that are in the dirt. I mean, a lot of folks, historically speaking, we didn't thoroughly clean out our carrots. I mean, when you were a farmer 500 years ago, you pick up your carrot, you take a bite. I mean, you got a little bit of dirt in your diet and that was fine. So the problem is, in the microbiome specifically, is when those healthy bacteria become annihilated because of the foods that we eat or the lack of the foods that we eat. And the pathogenic bacteria, the disease-harming bacteria, start to make us sick. And that's the concern, is when we start to get sick because those pathogenic bacteria start to outnumber the good bacteria. And here's the analogy that I think we all need to remember, is that without being strengthened, without being stressed, our muscles are going to get weak. And we have an immune system that will get weak if we don't stress it. So you want pathogenic bacteria around us. If that makes sense. You know, ever hear of a chicken pox party? I live in Atlanta and there's a big strong community of home birth people and um, uh, homeschooling folks. And you'll hear it, you know, hey, we're having a chicken pox party. Little Susie has chicken pox. So what do they do? Their little group gets together and they let their kids play and they're, all the kids get chicken pox at the same time because it's controlled and the kids' immune systems get boosted and they get stressed. So now when another attack comes, they'll be fine. We want, we want to be surrounded by pathogenic bacteria. We can't live in an antiseptic environment because if we are, our immune system becomes so dampened that puts us in a position where we can then die if something as common as the cold or the flu. So that's the significance of the human microbiome is it is the immune in the immune system, essentially, yet there's also a skin microbiome, which again, protects the body. We need to remember folks, when it comes to the immune system, the number one first barrier of the immune system is the skin. It's the skin. So when you're, yeah, we all are gonna get cuts, we all are gonna get bruises and scrapes, but when your skin is chronically dried, when your skin is diseased because a lot of the chemicals that we put on them, these antibacterial stuff, then our body is more susceptible to disease because chemicals seep through the skin into our bloodstream. Literally up to 60% of the chemicals that are in your lotions and in our shampoos go into the bloodstream through the skin. And that will break down the skin one by one by the barrier. Because again, those tight junctions, those barrier that our skin has is very similar to the barrier that our intestine have. And so intestinal permeability is just the same as skin permeability. We wanna make sure that things are intact. So we use healthy moisturizers like oils, oil, essential oil-based products, that sort of thing. So that all, if that's, that's a connection of the gut microbiome and how does it link to obesity? When the gut 
has been affected by an unhealthy microfloral balance. When the gut is basically not digesting the food as it should because there is a lack of healthy probiotics, then the body just simply cannot digest food. And if the body cannot digest and assimilate food properly, that causes weight gain and obesity. A very good solution for people who are overweight and who have chronic constipation and GI issues is to load up on fermented foods and probiotics. And that's when the supplementation comes into play. Now here's the thing folks, you're not probiotic supplement deficient. You might be probiotic deficient that you could get in your food or in your supplements. Hope that makes sense because it's really, really important. <music>